are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Friday right here on Locked On Spurs. We're going to have some fun on a Friday. We're going to be talking about jerseys. And if you had all the money in the world to spend, which Spurs jersey would you buy? Welcome back to Locked On Spurs. We're here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, we always thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. So our guest, Michael Jimenez, so San Antonio sports star, uh, had a good idea, and I'm totally stealing it from him. Which jersey, Spurs jersey, that is, would you buy if you had all the money in the world? Uh, we're going to be discuss- discussing that, as well as already the rumor mill popping up for the Spurs. Let's go ahead and bring on Michael Jimenez, San Antonio Spurs star's very own. He's also the host of Halftime. Jimenez, I'm totally ripping off your idea, brother. Oh, I know. You told me about it. You were like, hey, I want to do that topic, but... You know, I got going with this because uh, last weekend, Kobe Bryant had a game-worn jersey that went for $2.73 million. Wayne Gretzky had his uh, Edmonton Oilers game-worn jersey go for a record amount as well. And I was just thinking about it. I was like, man, if I had all the money in the world, you know, one Powerball or something like that, and I could buy any Spurs jersey in history, which one would it be? And I'm not talking about the kind that you can get at the mall yeah, yeah, get on yeah. How about a game worn jersey? And I had to narrow it down to about five to ten. And I think I found the one that I would want. All right. Well, we'll have some fun with that. We'll definitely rank them. Uh, your personal preference, my personal preference. I'll give you my top three. You give me all your ones. Maybe some of the fan react that you got on your poll. And then we'll be talking a little bit about already Spurs in the rumor mill ahead of the draft. So, jerseys, you know, Spurs fans love talking about jerseys whether it be the not-so-much-a-secret-anymore alternate city edition jerseys next season, the, the basic ABA throwback. Those are fun. But using your the premise you just gave us right now, uh, since you're the guest, we'll let you go first, obviously. What is What are your – I know you said you have about 10, but what are your top five? What is the number five to your number one jerseys from the Spurs in history, game-worn, that you have to have, you menace? Well, my number one is kind of questionable because you would think, you know, the Spurs have four Hall of Famers in Gervin, Duncan, you know, uh, Robinson, Manu, and soon to be Tony Parker. You would think that uh, I would choose one of theirs. But really, the top two that I would want do not even belong to a Hall of Famer. Um, The number one I would want is Avery Johnson's from the 99 Finals, Game 5, when he knocked down the uh, game-winning jumper. You know, that gave the Spurs the, their first of five NBA titles. You know, he had that jumper from like 17 feet, baseline, you know, 47 seconds to go in that game. And that sealed the deal for the Spurs to win the title just 47 seconds later. I think that that's the most iconic jersey in Spurs history. It may not be the most popular one, but to me, as a Spurs fan for so long, my entire life, that jersey, that shot meant so much, and it started the dynasty. And uh, it, I think that that's the really most did. iconic one in Spurs history. I, I'm iffy on that one. I'm iffy. I get it, <laughs> but but it's Avery Johnson. You know, it's it's. I, I get the idea because if that's the case, then might as well say. Sean Elliott's number 32 when he hit the uh, shot, the Memorial Day Miracle, because without that, the Spurs That's don't go on. Two. Okay, well, go ahead and talk about number two then. Sean Elliott. Okay, why is, why is that, Elliott's number two on your list? Because, you know, we, we talk about iconic moments. How about the most iconic shot in Spurs history? Um, you know, it's one of those things where sentimentally, it's so important for that Avery Johnson jumper to go in and, and lead to the first title. But come on, that Memorial Day Miracle jersey, that white 32 at the Alamo Dome. I mean, can you imagine if you have that, you know, framed and in your house or in your office? That would be remarkable. That, I mean, people would pay admission to see that Elliott jersey. And I would even say those shoes, man, because how those shoes didn't touch the line, his tippy toes the entire time. Yep. Um, that's, my, that's my number two. 
Wow. All right. So, so you gave me your first two. Let me give you my uh, first uh, two as well. I got to go with Tim Duncan's uh, championship jersey game worn on the road in MSG. First of all, Sam, it's in MSG. So it, mm-hmm. it's it's the classic. Who, I think they're wearing their black uniforms for the game winning. Uh, the, well, the game, uh, the game winning game that Spurs got their first title. Uh, he was the uh, finals MVP. That was still what? Not even peak Duncan yet. That was what? Sophomore? Maybe uh, junior sophomore. level already? Dun- dun- he was a sophomore season. Thank you. And that, you know, without him, it you know, there's pretty much no titles in, in, in San Antonio. So his jersey, his 99 Spurs Road black jersey against the Knicks, that has to be number one for me. I would frame that. I would say, look, that's the same. That's the jersey that he wore when he got his MVP trophy, the first of four, uh, because Tony Parker got no first of three, because Parker got one, and then Kawhi Leonard got one uh, to end the 2014s. But that has to be number one for me. Number two, I would go with Robinson's final game worn jersey. Again, it's a championship <laughs> jersey, number 50, white. The last time he wore the Spurs uh, colors, and, we, and now he's in the Hall of Fame now, just as Duncan is. Uh, you know, Admiral, you know, kept San Antonio in San, kept the Spurs in San Antonio, excuse me. And without Admiral, perhaps there would not even be a San Antonio Spurs right now. They'd probably be the Oklahoma City Spurs or the Nashville Spurs. So those are my top two right there Duncan's 99 game worn finals jersey and Robinson's last game worn jersey. Who's your number three? My number three was actually going to be that David Robinson jersey um, because of the photo. And I'm going to go ahead and say number four is the, tip, is the Tim Duncan jersey from 2003 as well. We know that photo where they're uh, hugging each other arm in arm and Robinson with his left hand, muscular body, is holding up the NBA t- uh, champ- championship trophy, the Larry O'Brien trophy. And Duncan with his right hand is lifting up the finals MVP trophy. That photo right there uh, is one of the most beautiful photos ever in Spurs history. That shot right there, that photo itself is my number three and my number four jersey, but I would rather have Robinson's over Duncan. Oh, man, he is you're killing me here. Robinson's over Duncan's. Because it's his last one. It's his last game. Very few athletes leave as champions the fact that David Robinson ended his career on top with a title, it's, 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 it's a storybook. I mean, it's a fairy tale ending. And to have that would be amazing. I wonder if he has that at his home or if that's somewhere in the Spurs organization. I'm pretty sure you know, he does. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure that he definitely good. has That's three and four for me. All right. So uh, here's – so I gave you, what, uh, two already? So I'll go in my next – uh, two as well, my three and four. Number three. Now, this is, um, I don't know if this is more of a sentimental thing or uh, just its place in history. Uh, I'm going to go with Sean Elliott's number 32. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I get your point about Avery Johnson's jersey that same season. You know, he hit the game winner, but I still go back to that. If it wasn't for Sean, because remember heading into that series, the Spurs were not the favorites. It was the Blazers. Remember the, remember the that Blazers team was like wrecking the NBA that season. That you know, young Damon Stoudemire, uh, Rasheed Wallace, was on there. Cliff Robinson was on that squad. They were like a wrecking ball, and the Spurs, you know, just smoked them. I, I believe they swept them. Did they sweep them that series? I don't remember, but I know it was a blowout. Yeah, but. You circle back. That was what a game in the Alamo Dome too. With Sean Elliott in, in the you know, one of the last few games in the Alamo Dome. Sean Elliott hits that shot, and he he was dealing with a kidney issue. Remember, he was playing on a bum kidney, and he kept a secret throughout that entire season. Or and then, of course, the bulk of of uh, the uh, playoff run. I think only Popovich and Steve Kerr knew what was going on, and he still managed to hit that that crazy, insane three-point shot. It's not only just Spurs history, it's NBA history. You know, you go back to some of the most clutch shots in, in NBA history, you got to put Elliott's up there. You have to. So for number three, I would put Sean Elliott's white 32 jersey 
uh, on my list. For my number four, I would go with Tony Parker because he's the forgotten spur uh, of the big oh, three. Wait. That way, the big three. Uh, it's always Timmy, then it's Mono, then it's Tony. Uh, but Tony had the longevity. Tony, I, I think obviously he's the greatest point guard in Spurs history. He was often overlooked among, among guards of his time. What was it? Always CP3 and Deron Williams and Jason Kidd. Yet those guys weren't doing anything as far as the resume is concerned. Allen Iverson, you know, loving Allen Iverson. He's all flash, but no, he didn't have the titles. Tar Parker backed it up. So I would go with a, a game-worn Spurs jersey, number nine, Parker's final game as this member of San Antonio Spurs before he left to join the Hornets. What about you, Jimenez? <laughs> you see, but that's the thing. You can't pinpoint that one play that Tony Parker has. You know, because there are signature moments. And, and you know, so, you know, if you ask me what my number five is, I'm having a hard time picking my number five because my well, number well, five... Well, hold on to that. Hold, okay. Well, hold on to that thought because uh, we're going to come right back and continue our chat about jerseys. So we've given out our top four game-worn jerseys uh, from the silver and black, but we're going to finish that discussion in just a few seconds, but we're going to be uh, talking about Bet Online right now. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info, and all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA to UFC to boxing and much, much more. Hey, they even got odds if DeAndre Ayton is going to join the Spurs or if Zach Levine is going to join the Spurs. Go see what the latest lines are for that and more at betonline.net. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information. Head to the website today. Look, you got yourself a cell phone, you got a laptop, you got a tablet. Go there right now. Learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. We are back with Michael Jimenez. He is the host of Halftime on Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, on uh, the San Antonio Sports Star. Now it's 94.1. Is that correct, Michael? Oh, man, 94.1, and we go all over the place. Halfway to Houston, people can hear us in South Austin, all the way over nice. to as far South Texas. We are – our footprint has grown tremendously. Yeah, definitely check out his show, Halftime, Monday through Friday. It's entertaining. As, as Michael Jimenez says, pop culture, nostalgia. I like that line. What do you say? Pop culture, mm -hmm. nostalgia, and sports. Yep, so it's all there. But we're talking about jerseys and which – Game worn Spurs jersey, would you fork over a lot of bucks for if you had the money? And again, this is all circle back to what Jimenez was talking about was that a Kobe Bryant jersey. Did, did you say how much that went for in that auction? Yeah, 2.73, I believe. 2.73 yeah. million, which is considered because it was actually valued by the auction house to be between three and five million. So I guess somebody got a bargain. Okay, before you give out your 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 number five. Could you see yourself spending that kind of cash on a jersey? I, I for me, oh, I can't do that. I don't think I could I do that. If I Powerball, if I won Powerball, I would most definitely spend money on something like that. Most definitely. Okay, what would be your non-Spurs jersey you would you would spend cash on? Oh, a non-Spurs jersey? Wow. Yeah. It could um, be NFL. It could be NHL. It could be MLB. It could be another NBA team. If I if it was up for grabs and I had all the money in the world, I would say Vince Young UT jersey when they played uh, the national title against the uh, against USC, one of the most celebrated championship games of all time. I think it was two thousand five. I would take Vince Young jersey. Uh, so for me, I think I would go with. Ooh. Oh man, that's a good one. I would like a Michael Jordan game worn jersey. I, I would like that. Uh, an MJ one. I wouldn't mind a. Oof, good lord! There's so many to pick from. How about a Nolan like, Ryan? A Nolan Ryan. I would go for a Nolan Ryan uh, Texas uh, Rangers jersey. How about some like uh, trunks from Muhammad Ali? You know, something like that. Oof, that'd be nice. That'd be so I mean, I sweet. I know we can go back in time and talk about players from the 1930s, the Babe Ruth of the world and whatnot, but yeah. I think it would be more sentimental for me to have something that was in my lifetime that I watched and that I celebrated. 
Yeah, exactly. same like, thing here. Yeah, for me, yeah. And, and you know, the Tim Duncan, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the 99 shot. I remember where I was uh, when the Spurs won it all and Timmy got that MVP trophy. Everybody remembers where they were, at least if you're old enough to remember when Sean mm-hmm. Elliott hit the shot and whatnot. All right. What is Michael Jimenez's final jersey on his top five list that he would spend oh. a lot of money on if he had that kind of cash? Oh, it's a tie. It's a tie. Can I can I give an honorable mention? Um, sure, go for it. Go my, for it. So who's five and who's honorable number mention? Would be David Robinson's jersey from February 17th, 1994. His quadruple double game. 34 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 blocks. Became the fourth player to ever record a quadruple double. Uh, that game right there is is special. Uh, it makes David Robinson even more special to have that on his bio. Uh, but I also have a, a very close honorable mention to Manu Ginobili's jersey from when he blocked James Harden from behind. Nice. That's yeah. that's my honorable mention. All right, here's my number five. He took the words right out of my mouth. Manu Ginobili, but not the Harden block, the dunk on Chris Bosh in the NBA <laughs> part. That, that, were they wearing their white jerseys for that one? I think it was, right? Yeah, I think so, too. I, I think it was the white. I would take Manu Ginobili's dunk um, on Chris Bosh, that jersey, because that was like a spark for the Spurs. I mean, that really got them going in that championship run. Really, really put the nail on the coffin as far as them on the mission. To right the wrongs the previous season and Mono Jovi just punctuated it. That team was just angry for them seeing the title slip through their hands. That was probably the closest they got to maybe getting a back to back. That was the closest that team got. But Mono Ginobili's dunk in the finals, no less, over one of the big three in Miami. Oh, give me that all day. Uh, I'll take Mono Ginobili's uh, jersey over Chris Bosch. And my honorable mention. Wow. This is just for fun. This is just for fun. I would like to take Matt Bonner's jersey when he had that thunder dunk against the Raptors. I don't know if you remember this one, but he came yeah. in and soaring out of the blue, like almost was like Air Bonner, and just dunked it on it. That'll just be more just for fun. Uh, you know, just something somebody had. like because you would like if you're looking at my collection right now, if I had that kind of cash and if Jimenez was here going through all my wow jersey, wow Jeff, that's the jersey from Sean. Yeah. That's the 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 Monter Ginobili dunk. Yeah. What the hell is the man Bonner doing here? You know, and I went like, well, let me tell you what happened. So uh that will be my just fun, honorable mention. But yeah, there's so many moments in Spurs histories uh when it comes to you know jerseys and, and moments you would love to own, you know, from the Monter's dunk uh, to the the block on Harden. How about this? Let me just let me just ask you this. Would you want, just for value now, for value, a Kawhi Leonard Spurs jersey, the black one he wore in his final in the game, winning the 2014 Finals MVP and title? Would you would you want that just for value's sake? You know, um, it doesn't have as much value for me to be honest with you. I mean, don't get me wrong. 2014 was the most satisfying of the five championships. Um, but it's, it's, it's still that, that wound is still there a little bit. I mean, I've moved on and whatnot, but it's just one of those things where, you know, uh, if I had that hanging in my house, people would just look at me going, dude, why do you have a Kawhi jersey up there? Okay. But what yeah. about just the, the, the monetary value of it? Because when he's going to retire and, you know, or whenever he does play basketball again, if he tears up the league, let's just say he comes back next year, he's the MVP of the league. You know, but you have that, and somebody would say, like, wow, you have that. Or what about a Kawhi Leonard rookie jersey? You know, something like that. And I get yeah. it, he is, you know, what a public enemy number one, you know, in San Antonio. But as far as just the financial value, I, I, I would be interested in just purely the financial side of it, Jimenez. I don't think Kawhi is that big of a star to, like, have, like, this astronomical. Oh, you're, you're definitely getting some more uh, friends now on the Spurs side right now for saying that. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, man. The guy's uh, disappeared. He's been stealing money for the better part of three years. Yep. Yeah. You, you're definitely right. Well, so no, you, you wouldn't want a Lucas Ominous jersey, you know, one of his rare, game, rare games he actually I'd rather well have a Boban jersey. 
Rather than Boban. <laughs> As an actor, he does all sorts of things. Those commercials. Give me Boban. Yep. No, for fun, I would just like to own a a, a Vinny, Vinny Johnson Spurs jersey, the number 15 he wore. Okay. Just for fun. Okay. Just like Johnson. Vinny Johnson. My microwave was a spur? Yeah, it was a spur. Yeah, for, Can you imagine uh, walking a around town with a, with a Rod Strickland jersey? I mean, you I see, liked Rod Strickland back in the day. Yeah, because he was a damn good guard, you know, and he, yeah. he tore up uh, the court when he was a spur. But, you know, everybody knows for him for that behind-the-back pass that sailed out bounds against Portland in the playoffs. Yeah, so, and I, 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 I half blame Sean Elliott for that because if I'm not mistaken, Elliott could have just, you know, gone straight to the basket and been wide open, but he stayed at the three-point line. I'm going to go yeah, back and rewatch yeah. that play in a moment. So many memories, so many memories of Spurs uh, moments, whether it be in the Hemisphere Arena. We didn't even talk about George Gervin. You know, what about that George Gervin jersey that he wore to win the scoring title? Didn't he drop like 60 something or something? It was just ridiculous. Yeah. He had to score at minimum, I think it was like 40, and he ended up doing like 60 or whatever. We need to talk about that, or maybe just the very first San Antonio jersey ever made once they made the leap from the ABA to the NBA. That'll be interesting. But there's so many moments in Spurs history. We want to know what yours are. You can let me know and which jerseys you want if you have the cash for it at Jeff G Spurs Zone. He is at Mike ESPN SC. But when we get back, uh, we're going to be talking about the rumor mill. He met us, brought something to my attention that I, that I think is interesting. And I think maybe, just maybe, the Spurs should entertain it. If it's true, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about Sakara. Now, you know what is Sakara? Well, Sakara basically wants you feeling your best, and it starts with what you eat. Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and truly enjoy it with delicious, plant-rich, transformational nutrition that builds a foundation for living in your body and the best way possible. And now is the time to seek wellness, joy, and abundance of an abundance in all areas of life, starting with what you eat with Sakara. You get nutrient-dense meals, snacks, and supplements that nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste or quality. True Ridian starts at your plate. Made with high-quality organic ingredients, Sakara's plant-rich transformational nutritional programs are expertly designed to deliver real results from reduced bloatedness to ease of digestion to clear skin, more energy, and better moods. Look and feel your best should not mean deprivation. Instead, choose joy and abundance. That's where Sakara comes in. Again, organic, plant-rich, transformational nutrition programs are designed to help you cultivate body intelligence so you can nourish your body and experience the results you want. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. And again, powerful plant-rich ingredients, helping boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar craving. It The, the positive, the benefits are just all there, and it's delivered right to your door, ready to eat. And right now, Sakara has, is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash locked on 20. We are back with Michael Jimenez right here on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. And we're going to be discussing the rumor mill with uh, yeah, with Jimenez and something he brought to my attention. But the ultimate NBA mock draft starts June 16th with over 50 insiders. Nothing equals the ultimate NBA mock draft. The Lockdown NBA big board experts plus the, uh, the Odyssey insiders. The first pick is June 16th. Search ultimate NBA mock draft. Follow now so you don't miss a pick. So, Jimenez, you brought up something to my attention involving the Spurs and the Raptors. Here we go again. What do the Raptors want? Well, what, what, what do the Spurs want to get? What's up? Well, it's according to the Action Network and Sports Illustrated also uh, wrote a story about it also citing the Action Network. And it's basically saying that the Toronto Raptors have too many threes and fours on their roster, especially with Scotty Barnes mm-hmm. being, uh, you know, so, so good, Rookie of the Year and whatnot. And that uh, OG Ananobi might be on the trade market. And hmm. the Action Network says that they would not be surprised if the Spurs are in on that action, that they have them as one of the two teams that would be a best fit and probably be the most likely to take a flyer on him, uh, but that it would cost possibly the number nine pick to make that happen, uh, maybe some mm-hmm. other considerations along the way. 
And uh, me and the sports star guys, you know, we, we text each other in these group texts and we're debating certain things. And uh, it's funny, you know, it's a, it's a polarizing question on our end because I'm looking at this thinking to myself that I would trade the number nine for OG in a heartbeat. Now, I don't know if there's any other considerations besides that, like a secondary, like a second rounder or another second, another first round pick. Uh, but OG, you know, he's, he's been in the league for five seasons. Last year averaged 17 points per game, five rebounds. He plays the three and four. Uh, he's six 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 seven. plays positional with basketball there. He's just kind of a tweener, kind of a big, kind of a small forward, kind of a power forward, kind of whatever you need. Um, this was somebody that reportedly back in the day when the Spurs were trying to unload Kawhi Leonard or find a home for him after he decided that he didn't want to play for the Spurs anymore, that this was a player that the Spurs were reportedly after back in the mm-hmm. day. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm taking a look at that number nine pick. We would hope that they would be as good as OG, so why not get OG now? And I was taking a look at his salary, by the way. His salary is about $17 million for this year, $18 million for next, the, the following season, and just under $20 million for the third and final year of his deal. He's got three years left. And I was thinking about it. The number nine pick makes over $4 million. So really, in my head, it's like a net $13 million, right? And basically, mm-hmm. that's kind of Doug McDermott money. That's kind of Derek White-type money. So uh, the Spurs would still have money to, on the table for – other free agent possibilities, um, I wouldn't mind it. It's interesting because Siakam has been on the Spurs radar for a while now. There was even rumblings when he was in the draft that the Spurs supposedly wanted to get him. And then, of course, mm-hmm. there was the Kawhi Leonard deal. You know, so, so reportedly the Spurs wanted him in the package, but that didn't happen, obviously. There's something about, though, it, it, does he fit the timeline? Does he fit the Spurs' current timeline? Is he going to be demanding the ball? You know, is he going to be happy in San Antonio in a rebuild? Um, that's what I'm. That's the only thing I'm worried about now. I'd love to have Siakam in a Spurs uniform. I think it'd be. I think it'd be good what he brings on both ends of the court, and you know, but but number nine, something about the nine pick. Is he worthy of a top ten pick, though, Jimenez? Well, I look at it this way. Um, over the past 10 years, the best player drafted at number nine was Yaka Pertl. So it's not like the nine pick's been very lucky these days. Now, back in the day, from 97 to 2011, you had a lot of all-stars that got picked. Uh, you know, Mario Stoudemire, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, DeMar DeRozan went at number nine. You never know. It's been a while since nine's been lucky in the draft. You know, I'm taking a look at some of the guys that could be available. Uh, I saw a, a post from ESPN today as to which players are going to actually be in the green room for the draft. And I'm looking at those names, and there's some very intriguing names that the Spurs could, could look at. But I guess the question is, do the Spurs want to be more relevant now, or do they want to have a project who can eventually develop into, you know, a superstar type of player? Um, you know, some of these guys that are in the league right now, I mean, that are in the draft, rather, they might be two- or three-year projects. And yeah. the Spurs have already had three losing seasons in a row. OG is, uh, is a 24-year-old. He's going to be 25 when the season starts. Still a very young guy, but not even in his prime yet. Uh, he, you know, he, he does have some difficulty staying on the court because of injuries and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but when he's on, he's on, you know. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting topic here because, you know, 17-point-per-game players don't grow on trees. You know, that's the exact same points per game that Keldon Johnson has. So, basically, would you be willing to, you know, unload, you know, uh, the number nine pick for somebody who can produce at the same level as Keldon Johnson? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, it's just a skill set alone, exactly what the Spurs need. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but you got to wonder, like, well, that stunt – the, the development path that some of these players are on because look, you know, we, he's going to, he's going to demand minutes and not heavy minutes. Uh, you know, we, he, I don't think he'd be okay taking a, a, a roll off the bench. So something's going to have to give. So we look, if you even say, okay, Lonnie Walker is not coming back, but you still have Vassell, you still have Keldon, something's going to have to give. And the, what about that idea of, 
he's going to gobble up some minutes. I'd rather have a, a a problem with too much talent on the team than not enough. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so I look at it this way. OG would probably be the starter. And, uh, you know, I'd rather have him start than Doug McDermott. You yeah. know, so you'd, you'd have a, a lineup there of uh, DeJounte, uh, Vassell, Keldon, OG, and hopefully somebody that you get uh, in free agency at five. I mean, that that would probably be the, the, the breakdown of it all. Yeah, well, definitely an interesting rumor, something that, you know, Spurs fan base definitely got to keep an eye on. Like, there's probably going to be tons of these little rumors popping up with the uh, draft ahead, especially maybe the, the night of or the day before. I expect the Spurs name to pop up left and right. Uh, you might have got a, you got a few seconds for some Spurs news that you may have missed. Yeah. You man, as beautiful you are, you got to go to the San Antonio Museum of Art. Tony Parker, uh, Sherry Museum of Art, his action figure, life size action figures of Marvel characters, DC characters, and Star Wars characters. I had the opportunity to uh, go to Media Night yesterday, and let me tell you, impressive. Now, he man, as I know, you're not a, as big of a nerd as I am. <laughs> but some of the names he was familiar are Thor, Hulk. By the way, for anybody listening in right now, I asked Tony Parker, which is your uh, favorite? Uh, I said, hey, Tony, which is your favorite portrayal of the Joker? And he said, oh, right away, he said Heath Ledger. And then number two was Joaquin Phoenix. It's all there. Go to check it out. It's a fun time. You They even have like the recent Batman uh, figure there. And they have... Uh, he man, they have a Wonder Woman there, and with a light up uh, rope. So I don't know if you want to take a picture with that. He man, that might pique your interest. She's wearing her brazier <laughs> swimsuit look. You know, but it's all there. Kids. Go, go ahead. I have kids, and they'd want to see all that. So I, I'd probably go check it out. Yeah, it's, it's open right now, so um, it's going to be there for a month. So check it out. Another Spurs news: Frost, Frost Bank extends ties with the Spurs. They also become the new naming rights partner at The Rock. This That's the uh, big sports complex slash public event complex that the Spurs and the city are building. Jimenez, do you think this is a sign that maybe the new name of the AT&T Center will become the Frost Arena? Um, I don't know if Frost Bank has the... Uh, um, I don't want to say the money to do it, but it's one of those things where I would picture more of a bigger business uh, as opposed to a state bank that would do that. Uh, well, I guess I guess well, I guess it is a national bank, but I don't really see it, it as is. such. But anyway, long story short, you know, um, it, it's kind of weird because who outside of Texas knows who Frost Bank is, you know? But right. I, I am glad that they're taking part with uh, the new project that's going on on the uh, far northwest side because, you know, a lot of Spurs fans, myself included, have been very, very – afraid of uh what this means uh, uh the spurs playing four games outside of the at&t center you know trying to read uh, into it some people say that i'm reading too much into it uh but the more that they solidify themselves with local businesses and sign longer contracts and longer deals with them uh it at least eases my fears a little bit uh compared to where where i was a month ago yeah yeah i, I still think it's going to become the dell center it makes sense. You know, Michael Dell, I mean, he definitely has the cash for it. So I, I still lean towards that way. No, I, and by the way, everybody know it probably won't be Fred's Fish Fry Arena. So <laughs> get that out of your system now. It ain't going to happen. And finally, congratulations to former Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond. She's been nominated for the Texas Sports Hall of Fame 2023 class. She's going in, Michael, for her WNBA career. Because remember, she played in WNBA in San Antonio with the San Antonio Stars, led them to their only what, finals appearance, didn't pan out, but uh, she's nominated. She joins the likes of Steve Stone Cold Austin. He's part of the nominee list. Uh, they're, uh, you know, Priest Holmes, San Antonio's own NFL player, Priest Holmes. So hopefully she gets in, Jimenez. Yeah, and uh, she also has, uh, she, she won, uh, coach of the month for the WNBA, her first month head coach for the uh, the Aces over there in Las Vegas. 
Uh, she's amazing. Yep. You know, I still wish she was part of the Spurs organization. But, uh, you know, for her to get this nomination, I'm sure she's a shoe in Yep, definitely is. So, and by the way, guess what? Voting is open to the public. You can go to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame uh, website and vote who should be in. So I like like that aspect of it. They have everybody involved in the uh, voting process. Jimenez, thank you for hopping on again. Appreciate this. By the way, everybody, this was like this. This is what the sec the yeah the sec we tried two times this week to get Jimenez on. First, first thing, first of all, did you find your puppy? The puppy safe? You, yes, uh, it was funny. I, I was uh, you know you tried having me on locked on a couple of days ago and uh, yeah. I was telling you I couldn't make it because I was looking for my dog and I ran away. And uh, I had quit looking for her. And I'd already broken the news to my daughter that uh, she might not be coming back uh, because it had been so long and no one was responding to, you know, Facebook posts on our HOA page and whatnot. And just when I gave up and was about to leave the house for the day, uh, the dog just strolled up into the yard. Just, I guess, went on a long two-hour, three-hour long walk. Uh, by herself, but uh, no, the dog came back. Hey, sometimes you know a dog needs time for themselves. You know, get, collect their <laughs> thoughts. That's all it was. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad the dog is safe. I, I'm glad that happened. Yeah, uh, but we're just happy that you're also back here on Lockdown Spurs, fan favorite. Every time you're on, I get people asking me, "When is he menace coming back on?" I'm like, "Well, <laughs> you can make it at least one time during the week." Uh, Michael, we're short on time, but uh, tell us what's going on at the Star. Oh, dude, a lot, man. Our footprint has grown, switching from 103.3 FM to now 94.1. We're all over South Texas now. I mean, we added over a million potential new listeners. We went from a footprint of 1.4 million people to 2.4 million people, and uh, it's amazing. Halftime continues to evolve. Uh, you're going to see on my show right now, uh, uh, you know, Rob Thompson's going to be on the show uh, one week. Ryan Eagle's going to be on the show one week. And we're kind of rotating some people right now because we're expecting some big changes down the road. I really can't get into what we're doing, uh, but there's okay. going to be some changes down the road that uh, we're really excited about. Uh, the show continues to evolve, and I would say that it'll probably take its final shape uh, sometime in the fall. But uh, I'm really excited about what's going on. All right. Follow Michael Jimenez on Twitter at Mike ESPN. SA, do it right now to catch up with him and see what the latest and greatest is with halftime. Great show, fun show. I love coming on every time Mike invites me. Subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, now on YouTube. So, yeah, no excuse for you to not find Lockdown Spurs. And once again, thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Check out Lockdown NBA Big Board. Host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Lee Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA draft, mock draft, player rankings, or his big boards. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Jimenez, always a pleasure for you to join Locked On Spurs. But for Michael, the Hulk Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs. <laughs>